Hello, this is Jennifer Gore with St. George Episcopal Church in the Villages, Florida. Today I'm interviewing Chaplain Gary Cadell, a member of St. George whose life of dedication to serving has blessed veterans and their families. Successful in business, an author, and a chaplain, Gary has a great story. You were actively supporting the recovery at Ground Zero after the 9-11 attack and subsequently authored a book about your experiences. Please share with us your experiences. Well, let's see, when I started off, I had just retired from working for the federal government for some 30 years, and I was volunteering with the American Red Cross when I got a call the morning of 9-11 to report to New York City to the World Trade Center. Uh, my job at that time with the National Red Cross was government liaison officer. So I reported directly to the governor of New York at the time, Governor Pataki, and my job was to make sure that everything was being supplied to the city that they needed as far as emergency equipment, medical equipment and so forth. So I ended up down at Ground Zero and wound up spending the better part of the month down there uh, working right down in the pit. However, once I got there, I all of a sudden found out that I needed a chaplain there and I've been an Episcopal chaplain for 42 years. So they recruited me both as a chaplain to work with the first responders there on site, uh, giving communion, holding services and so forth, and also helping to bring out the bodies that were found there. And at the same time, uh, also worked for the governor up in Albany. So it kept me pretty busy. Wow. And I did write a book at the end called 10 Days of Helen Heroes. Fascinating. So as the founder and chairman of Project SOS, support our soldiers serving veterans in many ways, tell us about the many aspects of Project SOS, both abroad and in our community. Well, Project SOS was an idea of my uh, son-in-law, Ronnie, who at the time was first sergeant with the U.S. Army Rangers in Iraq. Uh, he gave me the idea, and the idea mainly was to try and help our troops on the front lines and forward operation bases who were being wounded, and especially the children who were getting caught in the crossfire in Iraq. And that's kind of where we began. We opened up 23 clinics in Iraq to treat our soldiers and the children uh, through help of local hospitals here in Florida and then later expanded it over to Afghanistan and wound up building a 10-bed children's hospital in Jalalabad, Afghanistan, all of which still operate today. So we, we'd like to think we had a pretty good three-year mission overseas. And then we came back to the United States when that started to wind down a little bit and started taking care of our veterans here and their families that live in the local area with right near the church here. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing with our veterans who are currently living in the forest. Well, interestingly enough, there are about 150,000 veterans that are homeless in the United States, which surprised me. And one third of them are located here in Florida because of our climate. So t taking that into consideration, we decided we would start providing food, clothing, assistance, getting veteran benefits, which was a big part of the project and getting our veterans back on their feet again, helping their families. Many of them living out in the forest since Vietnam ended. Uh, we had three generations of veterans living out there and we still do. So we started with about 1,200 veterans and we got down to about 260 that were still left in the forest that we kind of surmised they would probably never leave there. They were older veterans and they knew no other way of life. So we were able to feed them, clothe them, get medicine to them, get in their benefits, get them into housing, and at the same time, get them into jobs. So it, it was quite successful. We've been operating now for a little over 10 years, almost 12 years now, actually. Uh, and we've been able to help a great many veterans, thousands of veterans, but there's still a lot out there, and we're still continuing to do that. We also give scholarships, college scholarships to their children, which is a big part of this. This year, we'll be awarding 12 scholarships to veteran children who live in poverty. Uh, normally would not be able to afford college. And, and that's kind of a special part of the program for me. I really enjoy that because our children do so well. Uh, we now have about 75 in total. We'll add 12 more this year. And the average GPA for most of our veteran children is right around 3.66, which is outstanding. That's amazing. So we're very proud of them. Yeah, yeah. So you also work with Gateway to Hope. I do. Father James, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that. Well, I work with Father James out at what was St. Patrick's Episcopal Church, which is now Gateway to Hope. We are a mission. We're not an active parish like here at St. George, but we have a vital service out there because we still work with the poor, with the homeless, uh, a lot of retired homeless that are out there. Uh, a lot of people that are living in 
conditions you and I couldn't even imagine, uh, quite a few children. So we have been working there initially as a soup kitchen, feeding families uh, four days a week, and then COVID hit. And when COVID came, we had to stop doing that because of state laws and, and so forth with the pandemic. So we started giving out groceries every Saturday and we supply every family that comes through in need with one week's uh, supply of groceries. We do that every Saturday and we've been doing that since COVID began, March of last year. And it, it's been quite successful. We had about, we have about probably 2,000 that we serve right now that come through every weekend. That's amazing. And we do parties for the children. We're doing an Easter party coming up this, uh, this week in Easter egg hunt for the kids. We did a Christmas party. We try and make it as normal a family life as we can for them at the same time, making sure they're well taken care of. Oh, that's amazing. Well, thank you for your service, both to God and our veterans and our families that live in the forest. And thank you, audience, for participating in St. George Episcopal Spotlight on Parish Life.